There are many wonders in the fantasy world, from the Great Vortex to the Black Pyramid. However, there are a few areas that can compare to the continent of Lustria, a massive continent that has jungles and creatures that some may have never even seen. And even then, when some of them do, they may never live to tell the tale. However, there is a race that has been residing in Lustria for a very long time. A race that used to raise beings into being the best that they could, but are now being hunted by the very same. A race that may seem like slow, lumbering feral beasts but are in actuality some of the smartest beings on the planet, and a race that has been abandoned by their creators but still want to follow through with what their beliefs tell them to do. This race is the Lizardmen. Now to the untrained eye, Lizardmen are very simple to understand, they're just dinosaurs fighting other dinosaurs. However, in actuality, their society is actually fairly complex. As an example, they have caste system and religious beliefs. Not only this, but they are willing to work with other races, even support other races if they feel it's necessary. Now let's move on to the Lizardmen themselves and their caste system. The reason I'm starting with their caste system is because it gives you an idea as to what species are in the Lizardmen and where they stand in their social hierarchy. Now the lowest caste is the worker caste, which concentrates on skinks and croxigores. The skinks are comprised of very small beings who are very agile, both physically and mentally. In essence, their brain is better than their brawn. However, the croxigores are the complete opposite. They're very big, but very brutish. And whilst they're able to comprehend tasks that need doing, they're not very intelligent, but their strength is overwhelming. Now these two beings typically work in conjunction with one another to build great architectural wonders. The skink being the brains behind the operation, whereas the croxgore is the builder. Now the next level of the cast is the warrior cast. This is comprised of beings known as saurus warriors. Now much like the skinks and croxigores, the saurus warriors are only good at really one thing and as you can probably assume, that is fighting. Now it should be said that all Lizardmen species are not naturally birthed. I will expand on this in a second, however what I need to let you know is that every Saurus Warrior, every Croxgore and every Skink, including the next species that I will be talking about in a second, knows exactly what they're meant to do and how they're meant to do it from the first second they are born. So for Saurus Warriors, they know battle formations, tactics and general ideas on how to deal with warfare. Now, as for the final caste, this is known as the Ruler caste. This caste contains beings known as the Slan. These are the leaders of all Lizardmen, and so as such, anything that they say goes. Now the Slan are probably one of the most powerful beings in the fantasy world. They are quite literally powerful enough to use their magical essences to destroy cities in a near instant. However, the Slan are facing a major issue, and this is that they are quite literally about to go extinct. Now as I mentioned earlier, Lizardmen are not naturally conceived, instead they are made. This is through chambers known as spawning chambers. And whilst the Skinks, Croxigors, Saurus Warriors and many other species of Lizardmen are still being spawned to this day, the Slan haven't had a spawning in a very, very long time. And for each death of a Slan, that means there's one more spot that needs filling but will ultimately never be filled. Now whilst this caste system is in place, this does not mean that beings within each caste cannot be a leader of the Lizardmen in some fashion. For example, Tehenuin. Tehenuin has helped the Lizardmen in many ways and has even become somewhat of an icon to the Skinks. He is a very controversial figure however as he is the prophet of a cult. And whilst he will still be looked down upon by many in the higher castes, that doesn't mean that he does not gain respect from some of them. Now that I've given you an idea as to their caste system and what core species are in the Lizardmen, let's talk about their history. Alongside their history, we'll also be talking about their religious beliefs. Many millennia ago, beings known as the Old Ones arrived onto this planet, and the Old Ones landed on the fantasy planet when it was a very primal and icy world and from shifting to tectonic plates to moving the planet close to the sun, the Old Ones had a plan known as the Great Plan. Now the Great Plan, whilst it is understood that there is such a thing by the Lizardmen, they do not truly understand it. However, there are some things that were known about the Great Plan. This included raising, nurturing and teaching early beings such as the primitive versions of humans, elves and dwarves. However, ultimately, like many things in the fantasy and 40k realms, chaos appeared. Now I should 
to say that the old ones are beings that are spacefaring, and so to get to and from this planet they had to use two gateways known as the Polar Gateways. Now unfortunately when Chaos arrived the Polar Gateways were also destroyed. This meant that while some of their structures were still around, the old ones never returned. And so in the Lizardmen's isolations they developed religious beliefs about the old ones. However, as time has gone on, most of their beliefs come from hearsay. These are through the sacred plaques that Lizardmen collect and read, but these are just giving descriptions of what the gods may be. But much like the game of Whispers, when you tell one person one thing, but it goes through several other people and reaches an end, the final result is going to be completely different to what the original vision was like. And this goes for all the gods except for one. Now going back to Tehenuan, he isn't a prophet of the old gods, these old gods being the old ones. Instead, he is the prophet of a new god, Sotek. Now the cult of Sotek is infamous, not just within the Lizardmen, but other species as well. This is because the cult of Sotek is known for their mass ritual sacrifices. And whilst most of the Slan mage priests were very upset with the fact that a new god who was not an old one was made, there was no doubt that Skinks clung to the Tehenuin, alongside the fact that Tehenuin's prophecies were coming true, then the mage priests started to accept this new deity. Now moving on from the religion and caste systems, let's talk about something many people would be wanting to hear. These next sections will be dedicated to the armies and troops of the Lizardmen, alongside the heroes that may reside in them. Whilst the Saurus warriors are in the warrior caste, this does not mean that other members of the Lizardmen species cannot be warriors. So you will have Croxigors and Skinks, however Skinks come in a few varieties, such as Chameleon Skinks, who are very sneaky ambush hunters, whereas you may have members of Croxigors known as Sacred Croxigors, which are big, brutish beasts that will decimate anything in their path using their fists and jaws. And when it comes to the Saurus Warriors, that is typically who they just are, Saurus Warriors. Now this isn't to say that Saurus Warriors aren't formidable, in fact they are absolutely incredible when it comes to combat. Now the Saurus Warriors alone are incredible combatants with incredible knowledge of hand-to-hand -hand combat and general strategy and tactics. Combine this with the fact that they are 8 foot tall lumbering masses of muscle and teeth, they are a formidable opponent. Now in a typical army you may just get a few Saurus Warriors, however if there is a high ranking official in the army then you may get beings known as Temple Guard. These are elite Saurus Warriors who are tasked with defending the most vital of assets. However there are still two different types of Saurus Warriors that guard to the respect of all other Saurus Warriors. These are known as Saurus Scar Veterans and Saurus Old Bloods. Both of these are the most ruthless of the Saurus species and are given leadership roles. Now both of these units are capable of riding the fabled Carnosaurs which roam the jungles of Lustria, and if you're unaware Carnosaurs bring fear even into the mightiest of beasts in Lustria, and as such to ride one takes a massive amount of skill and strength just to keep the beast under control. If left unchecked a Carnosaur can revert back into its feral instinct and kill anything on sight, even its own kin. However, Carnosaurs aren't the only beast that Lizardmen ride into war with. The more notable examples are that of the Stegodon, Bastilodon and Troglodon. Now Saurus Warriors don't ride these, instead it's given to the Skinks. And there are many varieties for these units, for example on the Bastilodon you have the Arc of Sotek or the Solar Engine. Now with the Stegodon you get a few different howders that the Skinks can ride in, but probably the most famous is that of the Engine of the Gods. This is a device that is carried on the back of a Stegodon that can shoot literal sun beams out of the sky onto their enemies, which will instantly vaporise anything it touches. Now there are many other units that Lizardmen incorporate into their roster, including Salamanders, Cold Ones and Pterodons to name a few. However there are a few that can quite encapsulate the awe-inspiring presence and horror at the same time as that of the Dread Saurian. These are monstrous behemoths that strike fear even into the most stoic of enemies. And unlike a majority of the other beings in the Lizardmen roster, the Dread Saurian requires the power of a slant to keep it under control. And speaking of the Slan, some may even go into battle. Now it should come as no surprise that the martial prowess of a Slan is next to nothing, however they make up for this with their magic. But this isn't to say that they don't get into hand-to-hand -hand combat per se. Some Slan are carried into battle upon the Stegodon, and on very, very rare occasion they may even ride upon what is known as a Thunder Lizard. Now Thunder Lizards are so large that their steps are akin to a natural disaster such as an earthquake, and should it come near a Lizardmen city, then there is only two options.
options. One is for a slad to control the beast's mind in a way to make it steer on a different course away from the city, and the other is just to get the entire populace of a city and make it run away. Now, as I said earlier, thunder lizards are incredibly rare, and rarer still is the lizard men having one of these beasts under their control. And now that I've given you an idea as to the infantry composition and some of the war beasts that lizard men use in their battles, let's talk about some notable lizard men themselves. Starting off with the slan, you have Lord Mazdamundi. He is the oldest living and most powerful out of all the slan mages. However, whilst he may be the oldest living, that doesn't mean he is the oldest of the slan in the current lizard men roster. For there is another slan known as Lord Croak. Now, Croak is so old that he was even taught by the old ones themselves. He, alongside several other slan, were the first ones to teach the elves magic. Now, Lord Croak has seen and performed so many spells that he himself is almost immortal. His body is decaying, but his soul remains intact, and it may even be there until the end of the universe itself. Now, moving on to the Saurus, there is Krokgar, Gorok and Chikax. Now what makes these Saurus different from the others is that, as an example, Krokgar. He's an ancient Saurus Oldblood who is the last of his kind from the now ruined temple city of Jotl. Now Gorok is known as the Great White Lizard and upon emerging from the spawning pools, his absolute sheer size and albino colourings made him an immediate candidate for a future champion. And finally there is Chikax who is known as the Eternal Warden who has been a temple guard for the Slan Mage Priest for millennia. Now as for the Skinks, I've already talked about Tehen However, there are a few others. Now, up first is Oxyotl, who is a legendary chameleon skink. He was there when Chaos first invaded, and he even found himself being in the Chaos Realm itself for a very long time. However, due to his natural instinct and chameleonic abilities, he was able to hide in the Chaos Realm from demons themselves. Next, we have Tic Tac Toe, who is the current master of the skies and is considered to be the greatest of all the Pterodon riders upon his favourite Pterodon, Zwoop. And finally, we have Teto Echo, who is the chief astronomer. If he appears, is on the battlefield, then it means that there's going to be an event of great importance occurring. He's been known to show that the heavenly bodies themselves will realign themselves in his favour. And now we move on to our last notable lizard man. This is Nakai the Wanderer. Now, Nakai is a croxagore, and as the name suggests, he likes to wander. However, he also goes by another name, that being the Spirit of the Jungle. This is because when he appears, it may be the only sign that an incoming raid is going to occur. Now, it should go without saying that each of these lizard men have a great deal of lore behind them, though unfortunately I'm not going to be able to go into all of them today. Though this isn't to say that I'm not going to be going into them in the future, it may be the case that I ask you guys which one you'd like to see first. And before I end this video by giving my thanks and telling you what's going on in the future, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And my first question is fairly simple, what is your favourite Lizardmen unit? It could be from the most feral of beasts to the Lord Croak himself. And my second question is a bit tougher, let's say against all the odds, the old ones return. Do you think they'd continue their original vision of the great plan, or would it be a new one which does not require any of the races alive on the fantasy world? Let me know in the comments below. Now I'd just like to end this video by saying an absolutely massive thank you once again. We have recently crossed 500 subscribers and the channel is growing literally daily. And this is where I'm going to bring up some big news. Whilst I still have that 750 subscriber goal in mind in which I'll create different social media accounts, I'm also planning on doing a few live streams weekly. Now I do have a few ideas, one of which is gaming, however the other is for you to come along and sit down with me and just watch me paint and ask me questions. I'd like to have quite a chill stream in which I can just paint away getting through my pile of shame and you can come and ask me questions as I do so. And one final thing is I'm still not doing weekly videos as of yet, I'm trying to get a backlog going and unfortunately I just haven't had the time to get through this. However, I will be doing weekly polls in which I'm going to ask you which races or things you'd like to see me do a video on. And as an example at the time of recording this video, I did one a couple of days ago in which I asked what race you would like to see me do a video on in the near future. And at the moment of recording, it stands at 163 votes with the Empire winning with 34%. So at some point soon, I'm going to be doing a video on the Empire. However, until then, why not give this video a thumbs up, comment down below anything you'd like to ask, and why not maybe even subscribe? But as always, until next time, have a good one.